So everybody, Apple just released iPadOS 18 Beta 2 to all developers to test out and try out to see if A, there's any new features, and B, if they were able to squash any bugs that we had when the original beta came out about two weeks ago. Now we did release a video yesterday demoing the new SharePlay, you know, mirroring control feature where you're able to take control over somebody else's iPad or iPhone. So definitely check that out because it's actually very, very cool and I'm a big fan of it. But there's a bunch of other features that Apple did release with Beta 2 that we want to touch on. So without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 18 Beta 2. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And we got to start off with how big this actual file size was. And we're looking at about 1.74 gigs on iPadOS 18 Beta 2. Now I'm running it on the brand new M4 iPad Pro with one terabyte of storage. So depending on which iPad you're using this on, it could be a little bit different, but give yourselves about maybe four gigabytes of actual space in order to get this installed and get it installed correctly. And then in terms of the build number itself, if I go into my settings, go into general, go into about, then tap into the iPadOS version, you see that we're on iPadOS 18 22A 5297F, meaning the closer we get to this F moniker being gone, so it's going to go down to E to D, all the way down to A, and then completely be gone for the RC edition. I'm thinking we're probably going to get seven to eight betas before we get the actual public release, which will be sometime in mid to late September. So keep that in mind as we go through these updates, but I do believe the public beta should be coming out sometime in July, so if you are waiting for that one, then it's going to be a little bit closer. So in terms of what's new with the first beta, the big headliner was that brand new FaceTime screen share situation, which I'm going to overlay some footage about, which basically means during a FaceTime call, you can actually not only can you share your screen with your iOS, macOS, or iPadOS device, but you can actually take control of the other person's device as well. So first and foremost, if you do allow yourself to screen share your, your device, the other person on the other side can actually annotate in real time. So if they want to point something out and walk you through something without actually taking control, they can do that. But then also, if you do want to give them full control of your device, you can do that as well. So not being able to remotely go into somebody else's device is going to be very beneficial for those people that are trying to at least help people walk through stuff. And I will say you have to be on the latest version of iPadOS and iOS 18 beta 2 in order for this to work. And if you're FaceTiming with somebody with an older version of iOS, it will not work. But once you are updated to iOS and iPadOS 18, it'll work flawlessly. And I've been a big fan of all those new features. If you want to see a complete demo on that, I will link it down below for you guys to check out. So now the next piece I want to talk about is going to be all about Control Center, because Control Center did get a bunch of new updates, at least from a usability standpoint. With Beta 1, it was a little bit wonky, it was a little bit broken sometimes, but now we did get some new features and some new changes, but now it's just much easier to use, much more fluid, the animations actually work out, there isn't anything crazy going on, but the first thing we notice with Control Center is if you tap on this power button, it used to take you to the turn off section or the turn off screen to slide to turn off, but now you can see if I tap it, nothing happens. And now I believe that was put there on purpose because people were accidentally touching the power button. So now you actually have to hold down that power button in order for it to actually go into the turn off mode and the turn off screen so there's not going to be any more accidental touches. And it was annoying because every single time you press that button and you didn't want to turn it off, then it would actually lock your device when you wanted to go back. And then when it comes to actually customizing the home screen itself, if you press the plus button up here, it actually is much easier to move around. So if I want to move the stage manager and make this bigger, it makes it a little bit bigger. There's some new naming monikers in here. It's easier to kind of move around the Shazam one or move around just different aspects of Control Center. So it just makes it a little bit easier to run around and easier to kind of run and gun and change a bunch of these different kind of settings and icons that you have as quick access toggles in your actual control center. So you can see that it's just a lot more fluid. If I move this over, I can do that. If I move this down, we can move that there. Again, it just it makes a lot more sense. It's easier to use the pull down menus to make things bigger work a little bit better as well. So you can see I can easily make the camera bigger and it doesn't kind of mess it up or anything like that. So overall control center just feels a little bit more kind of well done and a little bit more efficient. Another good part about the control center update is that I got the search function got a little bit better and a little bit easier to navigate. So you can actually get a little bit more kind of granular with exactly what you want. No longer does it give you a bunch of different options. If you want to look up stopwatch, it'll give you stopwatch, whereas before it would give you a bunch of different clock options as well. So the search functionality actually works as intended as an actual hardcore search. And also when it comes to music recognition or Shazam, if you long press on here, it's now a little bit of a different animation. You can go to your recognized music to actually turn it on. And then you can go to your history to see exactly what you've been dealing with in the past. Some other little things that we did notice is if I long press on here and you go to edit to actually customize your screen, there's now a new icon over here which looks like a brush and an iPad to customize these widgets. And if you go in here, you do get a couple more options like going into a little bit of a darker mode even though you're in light mode. The dark mode isn't anything new, but being able to toggle this off and on is now a nice little feature. And then of course you can go into tinted which has gotten a little bit better, a little bit more crispy, and not as kind of like wonky as it was before, which is something that we didn't like. So if I move this over, it does look a little bit better, I guess. 
but overall that tinting feature for me, I'm not a big fan of, I just like the dark mode icons much, much better. And then speaking of dark icons, you might have noticed that Apple finally gave us the App Store dark icon for some reason. The App Store icon was one of the only actual icons that wasn't given a dark mode icon, but now it is there, and honestly, it's one of the better looking ones. So if you guys do go to beta 2, you can now actually go full dark mode with all iOS apps and iPadOS apps. Now I want to go into the Files app because we got two big time features which are going to make this a little bit easier to navigate when it comes to using your iPad in the Files app. But what I'm going to do here is actually plug in an external SSD. So I plugged it in, give it a second to get recognized, and you can see that my T7 Shield did show up. One thing that was kind of annoying when it came to the Files app in the file system in iOS and iPadOS was not being able to format SSDs. So now if I long press on my T7 Shield and then press Erase, I would be very careful doing this, but if you press Erase, then you can actually format it correctly in the way that you want. So you can go APFS, you can go APFS, EXFAT, MS-DOS, FAT, and then actually erase it and format it in that way. Obviously, I'm going to not do that because my SSD is my end-all be-all and I don't want to mess anything up. But now that we can actually format your SSD off your iPad, again, something so trivial and sh it should have been there since day one is now available with iPadOS 18 Beta 2. And then another thing that you may or may not have noticed that with iOS 18 Beta 1 and iPadOS 18 Beta 1, for some reason, whether it was by accident or on purpose, when you went into an image in your Files app, you used to be able to go up here, press the Share button, and there used to be a Save Image button with the older versions of iOS and iPadOS. But for some reason in Beta 1, they removed it, where now in Beta 2, they did bring up that Save Image back, which was very, very annoying. I remember with the first Beta, I would have to copy this and send it over to my Photos app by holding it down and dragging it over. So I'm not sure if Apple did that on purpose, but they did bring it back and realize that it was a mistake to actually do anything like that and remove that Save Image toggle. And then when it comes to the translate application this is a brand new splash screen that you're going to be greeted with when you open it up and what's nice about this is that we now have a hindi translation so translate words or phrases to and from hindi which is a great little add-on because honestly there's billions of people that speak that language so i'm glad that apple is able to bring this into their translation app some other tidbits of the translation app is that now your favorites actually translate you know quote unquote or sync across all your different translation applications on all your devices which is something i'm surprised it wasn't around before and then you also have transliteration which is translations for chinese japanese and korean they're converted to Latin-based text for easier readability. So again, making it easier to communicate and kind of bridging that gap, which is nice to see. And now some iPad-specific news is going to be all about sideloading and the EU changes. They're all officially coming to the iPad whenever that does happen. I believe it'll happen in September when iPadOS 18 is released. But now you'll be able to sideload applications with third-party applications or app stores directly on iPadOS, which wasn't the case when it was first announced. So those are all the changes that we saw. And then there's some other little things like added glyphs and finally Apple giving us a little bit more when it comes to this new menu format. Not every single iPad app has it, but now there's more iPadOS apps native applications that have this new kind of top bar view that you can then customize and go to the side and move them around. So things are coming slowly but surely. And then lastly, I do want to briefly talk about performance and battery life because overall performance has been great. It's been very snappy. There have been a couple instances where I've had to restart the iPad, but again, nothing super detrimental to my day to day in terms of losing any data or anything like that. My main applications, my main workhorse applications like LumaFusion and Affinity Photo, WordPress and SAMA, they all work great. They all work as intended. I haven't had any issues with the update to iPadOS 18. Again, I just want to reiterate to install your own risk because this is a beta and we're still early on in this beta. And I have heard some horror stories already online, but you know, knock on wood with both my iPhone and my iPad, we've been all good to go. But now let's look into battery life and see how it's been doing over time over the last 10 days because the last 10 days we have been using the latest version of iPadOS 18 Beta 1. So if you go on a day like Monday where we did use it a decent amount of time, 6 hours and 42 minutes of screen on time, only took up less than 50% battery which is very interesting. Again, I'm not using too much of the hardcore apps like Notes was open for a little while. We had LumaFusion open for an hour and 21 minutes. So this is a battery life that I would not get on my M1 iPad Pro. Just to give you an idea of what that looked like. On a day like this one, we had 5 hours and 48 minutes of screen on time, 5 hours of screen off time. Again, the USB-C accessory might skew it a little bit because it was on for 3 hours, but again, we're dealing with less than 50% battery taken up. And then on a day like Wednesday, we use a little bit more battery, but overall, battery life, again, I'm using a brand new M4 iPad Pro. I don't know what it would be like if I had an older device running iPadOS 18. It probably wouldn't be amazing, but overall, I have been happy with the battery life on my M4 iPad Pro, which is something that I can't really say about my iPhone 15 Pro Max on iOS 18. That one has been a little bit on the bad side when it comes to battery life, but again, you cannot fault it because of the fact that this is a beta and you signed up for this to begin with. But let's finish up the video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, since this is a beta 2, there are a decent amount of new features and kind of visual changes that we were able to look at. Unfortunately, there's still no AI piece into this, no Apple intelligence, no new Siri, 
but we did get new things like I mentioned earlier, like that new share play control takeover feature, which we did have a whole video on, which I will link down below for you guys to check out because it is very impressive. But then there was other just new tangible features that kind of just give you a better quality of life, some better improvements, some bug fixes that make it a little bit easier to use. So overall, I'm happy in the direction iPadOS 18 is going. I'm just hoping with maybe an 18.1 update eventually later on this year that we'll get some more stage manager focused features for those multitasking pros. But that's going to do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little cat in the comments down below because go Panthers, Stanley Cup Finals. If you guys want to watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy this video right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.